Hello everyone, it's Chemicator. Welcome back to my channel. In this episode, I wanna take a deep dive into the toolbox of organic synthesis and break down the concept of the cut and sew strategy as a means to build rapid molecular complexity, which is one of the milestones of modern organic synthesis. This strategy lies at the intersection of transient metal chemistry and small ring compounds. This combination is a powerful method for creating challenging target in a catalytic pathway. The most important advantage of this method is functionalization of chemical bonds considered inert because they can't be functionalized with classical methods. Generally speaking, in the cut process, a transition metal inserts into a carbon-carbon bond by oxidation addition, followed by migratory insertion into a pi unsaturated unit and reductive elimination, a SU process. This strategy is especially useful in free and four membered ring. Due to their strain energy, transition metal can easily insert into carbon-carbon bonds and proceed with the reaction. Let's start with alkylidine cyclopropane. As you see, this compound contains a cyclopropane attached to a double bond. The presence of this double bond brings interesting features to the molecule. Cyclopropane itself is the smallest ring in organic chemistry and shows unique properties due to having bent bonds. In other words, molecular orbitals have to bend to create a free-membered ring. This unique arrangement of orbitals is also called banana bonds. As a result, bent bonds have a smaller overlap compared to a normal carbon-carbon bond, leading to creation of weaker bonds. This means that carbon-carbon bonds in cyclopropane are more reactive than normal carbon-carbon bonds. In truth, cyclopropane shows similar behavior to a double bond because of having weaker bonds. If you are wondering why cyclopropane is still a stable compound, check this video to gain a deeper understanding of this amazing ring. Now what happens if we install a double bond on cyclopropane? The result is an increase in ring strain. Cyclopropane has 27.5 kcal per mole strain energy because of deviation from the ideal tetrahedral bond angle. Installing a double bond adds to this deviation because it introduces an sp2 carbon atom to the ring, resulting in 41 kcal per mole strain energy. This increased strain provides an opportunity for synthetic chemists to use it as a reactive compound in reactions. Now let's examine the reactivity pattern of alkylidine structure propane with transition metals. The free membered ring can be cleaved in two distinct ways. Based on the distance from the double bond, there are two bonds within the free membered ring. The C2C3 bond is referred to as the proximal bond because it's closer to the double bond, while the C3C4 bond is considered the distal bond. The cleavage pattern depends on the nature of the metal. For example, ruthenium and nickel typically cleave the proximal bond, leading to a specific product after reductive elimination. In contrast, palladium and rhodium often insert to the distal bond. The situation becomes more complex compared to other patterns because alkylidine structure propane can also behave as a C3 component. In such cases, the mechanism may vary depending on the substituent present. Now let's apply this theoretical concept in practice. In 1988, Motherwell and co workers studied the intramolecular 3 plus 2 circular addition of diphenyl methylene structure propanes with alkene using a palladium catalyst. In this reaction, alkylidine cyclopropane is considered as a free carbon unit and reacts with alkene as a two carbon unit, resulting in a five membered ring by distal bond cleavage. Afterward, the group expanded this method to methylene cyclopropanes. Similarly, they synthesized five six fused ring systems by adding one carbon atom to the starting material. In 1991, the group found that the presence of a heteroatom assists the transformation. Notice that when R is hydrogen, no desired product is observed, but when R is a benzyl group, a fuse ring system is produced. It's also interesting that the fuse ring system is trans, which is thermodynamically less stable than the cis product. In the transition state, the oxygen atom chelates to the palladium, which facilitates the cyclization process. In its transition state, the cis double bond can adopt two different conformations. The others pointed out in this transition state, presence of unfavorable non-bonding interaction between the ester, ether, and palladium is the reason for the stereoselectivity of products. To 
To better understand, let's see the reaction mechanism. During the cut process, palladium inserts to the distal bound and coordinates to alkyne on the other side of the molecule. As a result of this oxidative addition, palladium 0 is converted to the palladium plus 2. Next, the first cyclization occurs in the SU process by alkyne migratory insertion. In the next step, a sigma to pi allyl inner conversion occurs. In other words, palladium which was attached to the sigma bond in the 6 membered ring coordinates to pi allyl system. In the final step, the SU process is completed by reductive elimination and palladium 0 is regenerated. If you are interested in building such complex structures by designing appropriate starting materials, check this video. In 2010, Jean Group presented an interesting approach to creating valuable cyclopentaindine derivatives via the proximal bound cleavage of alkylidine cyclopropane. In the first step, nickel inserts to the proximal bound, leading to the formation of the nickel cyclobutene species. Next, the core structure of indine is created through the intramolecular addition of the alkyne. Finally, the fused ring system is produced by reductive elimination. Note that this step is typically challenging for producing 6-5 fused bicyclic systems, but in this case it proceeds more easily due to the formation of a conjugated system. Another interesting aspect of the reaction is the choice of nickel as a catalyst. Testing various transition metals like palladium and rhodium revealed that the only nickel can produce the desired product with high yield. Nickel has a rich history, which is why I created a video about this fascinating transition metal. Check out this video to gain a deeper understanding of nickel. Now let's extend our discussion to 4 membered ring and make it slightly more complicated. In 2014, Nikolai Kramer and co-workers developed a highly enantioselective strategy to create a free 2-1 bridge compound with two chiral centers. The interesting feature of this reaction is that a wide variety of bridge products can be produced by installing different substituents on the alkene moiety of the starting material, which adds a chiral center to the final product. So it isn't confined to the terminal alkene. For example, look at this complex structure in which a hexane ring is fused to the bicyclic product. Such a densely functionalized product can be produced by installing hexane on the starting material. In the first step, rhodium coordinates to the olefin and cyclobutenone. Next, during the cut process, it inserts into the carbon-carbon bond. Then, intramolecular migratory insertion occurs in the molecule and the final bridge product is created by reductive elimination. Notice that the first step leads to the asymmetric oxidative addition. In other words, there are two enantiotopic carbon-carbon bonds for insertion of rhodium. However, only one of them undergoes cleavage during the cut process, and this is the reason for the enantioselectivity of the reaction. Now look at the ligand used in this enantioselective reaction. The group used the bulky congener DTBM secfos ligand. In this ligand, two phosphorus centers are attached to the biphenyl skeleton, along with DTBM substituents which play a crucial role in the enantioselectivity of the reaction. To simplify, I indicate only one of the bulky DTBM substituents and represent the remaining substituents with purple spheres. First of all, the rhodium complex reacts with cyclobutanone and the DTBM secfos ligand, creating a new square planar complex in which rhodium is attached to the two phosphorus atoms. On the other side, it's attached to the olefin moiety of cyclobutanone. After that, rhodium inserts to the carbon-carbon bond. As I said earlier, there are two bonds available for rhodium insertion, leading to the creation of two transition states, but only one of them is stable. Now I wanna discuss the stability of these two transition states. Don't confuse when you look at this structure. As a result of insertion, rhodium is converted into an octahedral complex. In this transition state, rhodium is part of the 5 membered ring so that from the upper side, it's attached to the carbonyl group and from the lower side, its coordinates with the double bound. You can see the two phosphorus ligands attached to the rhodium from behind. 
In this conformation, there is a serious steric interaction between the double bond and one of the substituents of the DTBM ligand. This steric hindrance raises the energy of the transition state, so the reaction proceeds through another transition state that is more stable. As you see, in the second transition state, the double bond moves away from the bulky substituents, eliminating the serious interaction. As a result, the product formed through this transition state is the dominant product, leading to the high enantioselectivity.